So, good afternoon everybody. Um, my name is Joana Petrovic and I'm here to present the work I've done alongside Gabriela Zaharias and Pasquale Setpico in ICTP. I will talk to you more about the Galactic Center Gamma Ray Access and I will start with a small introduction about the Gamma Ray Sky in general. So, as some of you may know, the Fermi Lyra Telescope shown here has been operative since 2008 and has collected loads of data on the gamma ray sky and has produced many of such maps one you can see here so uh, this map here shows all the components of the gamma ray sky seen by fermilat as you can see there's the massive diffuse component that's mainly here in the disk of our galaxy due to the fact that the most of the interstellar medium which has been targeted by cosmic rays is actually here in the disk then you can see many point sources everywhere, including the disk. Uh, they're also included in these maps. So you could de decompose each and every of these maps by modeling all different components. You can model, as I said, the diffuse map. You can also model point sources. You can model something that has been discovered by Fermilat, and those are Fermi bubbles, two features that go up and below our galactic disk and probably represent something uh, that came from the active past of our galaxy, from the jets, from an era when our galaxy was an active galactic, had an active galactic nuclei. And then you may add an extra component so that when you add up all of these maps, what you get is the same as what Fermi gets. So, as it turns out, when you model all of the maps we already know, uh, you need an extra component, so you need this fourth map to get what Fermi sees. So, sorry, the extra component is uh, an access that comes from the galactic center, so from the innermost part of our galaxy, a few degrees around the center of our galaxy, as you can see here. And this has been taken from Dalen and his collaborators' paper, one of the first papers that was published on this topic. and. As you can see, this is where this access in gamma rays comes from, and some of the main characteristics of this access are given here. So, as you might have seen in the slide before, sorry, the shape morphologically is uh, spherical, and the, when this was first claimed, it was a not so robust claim, but then in later papers, it has been discovered that it's definitely spherically symmetrical and it has a very intriguing spectral shape. So the spectral shape is something that's not more than a power law with an exponential cutoff, as you can see here given in this equation, and the parameters are given in this range. So what is so special about this spectral shape is that it actually consists with what we expect to see if we have dark matter annihilating in the center of our galaxy and thus creating byproducts through standard model particles. So we expect to see such spectral shape from 30 to 40 GeV dark matter particles that annihilate mostly through BB barred uh, channel. And here in this diagram you can see how dark matter annihilates. Uh, this these particles here represent the weakly interacting massive particles, so the most popular candidate for dark matter. And as you can see, one part of these should go into gamma rays, which should be seen. And why would galactic center be so dominant when searching for dark matter is actually uh, because the dark matter should be very dense in this region. Uh, and another interesting fact is that the total flux that was calculated from the Fermilla data uh, from 1 to 3 GeV, that's where it, where it peaks, is 10 to the minus 10 ergs per centimeter cube per uh, second, which is also consistent with what we expect from 30 GeV thermal relics of dark matter. So all these results are very intriguing for anybody who looks for dark matter through in indirect searches. Uh, but we should not forget all the other candidates that could explain such access. So the first and most intriguing one is definitely dark matter. And I may refer you to uh, two very good papers. The first one published in this topic with Dalen and his collaborators, 
and the latest one, which is here, Bingman and his collaborators both could be found in the archive. And what I think motivated most of the papers is this claim here that was in the first paper by Dalen and his collaborators that states that there is a statistical preference greater than 40 sigma if they add the template of dark matter to all the other maps of the Fermilat. So this 40 sigma here was something very astonishing and one may ask why after such a big claim anybody else would search for other explanations than dark matter. But the fact is that there are a few caveats in this reasoning, first one being that they've used an old diffuse map and not the latest one. And some say that this is what causes this bigger significance that it should be. And the other one is that all the error bars calculated, so all the errors are uh, pu purely uh, uh, systematic, uh, sorry, purely statistical. So no in-depth systematics has been done uh, until the Bergman paper, so the latest one. So this is why it's such a big uh, statistical preference and has now, be, now been lowered down to two to three sigma. So we should search for other candidates that may explain this access as well. So the other big group of authors have been searching for candidates amongst different astrophysical sources. So one of the most promising candidates are millisecond pulsars. A uh, special type of pulsars that should inhabit the center of our galaxy. We are not sure how many of them there are, but Fermilat has been finding more and more on a daily basis, so we expect that there may be many. And maybe there is something else, something we cannot see. The problem with the galactic center and the fact that we can state that there might be something else is that the galactic center is a forest of different sources. There you have the supermassive black hole, you have O and B stars, you have star, star clusters, you have supernova remnants and similar things. So uh, it's very hard to distinguish all different components that might uh, explain this access. What we did was also focus on something that could be categorized as an astrophysical source. So we propose a completely new way of explaining this, this gamma ray access and we've named it the galactic center bursting source. So what this GC bursting source is. So as previously stated, uh, judging by the Fermi bubbles, uh, our galaxy probably had an active past, even though it's quiet at the moment. So we have Fermi bubbles as witnesses of such past. Also, we have the supermassive black hole there. So we expect that certain activities may occur in the galactic center. So what we proposed was an analytical moment of unspecified events. So we stay agnostic to what this event might, may be. Uh, we just parametrize it and say that it injects uh, energy and accelerates electrons. So what we need is a source that should provide us with the power low spectrum of non-thermal electrons that then diffuse through the medium and lose their energy through different channels, through inverse Compton radiation, through Bremsstrahlung, and what we calculate is the overall, overall energy of such event. So we are checking whether this event could produce enough energy to explain the GC access. And what we also do is look back in time and search for a specific point in time when this such an event could have happened and could explain what we see today. So how we get the gamma ray spectrum is numerically. So we just convolve the electron spectrum with the inverse Compton power, which is in turn integral of the interstellar radiation field and the IC cross section. So that's quite simple. And here you can see one of our results. So this is the typical way of presenting um, these results since the Dale and Etoll's paper. So here on the y-axis, you can see uh, the energy times flux. And on the x-axis, you can see the energy, where the dots with the error bars present the Dale and Etoll best fit of dark matter annihilation template. And in blue, red, and orange, you can see what we get for our analytical model for different times when the injection of energy might have happened for different energies, 
and with B, we actually express the energy losses of the electrons. So, as you may see here, uh, our results fit quite well to the same best dark matter template that was offered by Dale and his, and his collaborators. And the biggest differences you can see here at lower energies. And we explain these differences because, as I said, here the error bars are purely uh, statistical. So these error bars do not include any systematics. And it's important to say that at low energies, Fermilat loses its resolution a lot. So it becomes basically blind above 0.5 GeV. So this might be the reason why there are such big differences between our results and what Dalen and his collaborators got for their best fit of dark matter annihilation template. So um, here I would only conclude my talk with um, what we found during our investigation of such a bursting event. Uh, so we found that by injecting uh, 10 to the 52 to 10 to the 53 ergs of energy in a very standard power law cosmic ray electron spectrum uh, in an event that could have happened one million years ago, we, seems to, we seem to reproduce most naturally the spectral and angular features of the claimed GeV axis. So why we did the whole investigation was to, uh, was to emphasize how important it is to take such transient events uh, in uh, your calculations when you're thinking about explaining the G GC excess. So the main goal was to raise awareness of the importance of ac accounting for such transient events. And also we tried to emphasize the importance of uh, going through all the different candidates that might explain this GC access until we have more reliable data that it might be dark matter. So what we are doing at the moment, and I will use the last minute to for some advertisement for our next paper, is we are actually uh, trying to see whether the mentioned millisecond pulsars could also be a viable candidate and could explain what we see in the gamma rays as a GC gamma ray access. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Adam. Okay, yes, please, some questions and co comments? Your turn. Right, and a very quick question. Your second point, your last slide about the transient sources. Okay. Um, what do you mean by transient sources? In, in, uh, in my language, that means something very, very different. So I'm not quite sure what type of transient sources you're talking about. So transient events... Such as what? Transient events would be any such events that could provide us with a power law electron spectrum that then diffuse... Then then diffuses through the medium, so any type of such bursting event. We did not, in our model, we did not specify what such an event could be, but it could be um, an activity of the supermassive black hole that could provide us with such an electron spectrum, maybe infall of gas or any sort of violent uh, activity around the galactic center. Well, I think we need to talk after. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Some more questions or comments? If not, I'd like to close the session and to thank the Mustafa. So, it was the last talk of the session. It was very important and very interesting.